you know, from, as a player, he wants to play football, Johnny. He, he does. You can see it in him. You know, I know he played last Wednesday against my son at Old Trafford, Stoke, and you know, Thomas was just saying, oh, it's just, you know, it's like he didn't want to be there. You know what I mean? It was just like just been to a funeral. You know what I mean? It, that's exactly what it was like. We've been to a funeral, and you could sense that everybody wanted to say something. You know, did you see what happened there? Did you see what everyone wants to talk about, but. Fergus says, no one says a word. No one says nothing. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the United Stands. I've got Paul Ince with me again, and we're going to be talking Ronaldo, Van der Beek, the season, the transfer window, the next few games, and also a little bit about that uh, Cantona incident at Sellers Park a little bit late for the for the golden oldies or the people who don't really know much about that. But how are you doing, Paul? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah, I'm very good. Uh, had a busy weekend, bit of golf, bit of drinking. Thought I'd come up from London. Um, just recovered, just recovered. But um, yeah, I'm good, yeah. Looking forward to the show. Should be fun. Got a lot of things to talk about. So you've got a Greenwood shirt on there. Is there, is there any reason why you've got that on? Um, we sell these t-shirts, so if people want to buy one, the link's probably in the video description. But uh, no, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of Greenwood, are you? Yeah, yeah, I love him. I love, I love everything about him. He kind of reminds me of the likes of that 92 class. You know, and that's, that's probably a big thing coming from me. But, you know, I was party to that, watching those kids come through, Gixi and... Beckham and Scalzi, um, and he's got that kind of awe and presence about him for such a young kid. He's got that kind of slim build, um, two great feet. He, he, he looks like someone who can be one of the greats as, as the years go on. He really, really can. And you can't say that a lot about a lot of Manchester United players recently, but he looks like one if he, <clears throat> excuse me, if he keeps his feet on the ground and listens to the right people. Obviously. R7 coming in now that have helped him a really, really lot. Um, but he is so talented and, and, and he's got a nice demeanour about him, a nice attitude and mentality. You don't really see him get involved in anything. He just wants to he just wants to play football. Like he, 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 he's someone who who loves to play football. He wants to be out there playing football. Some players are just happy to sit in the stand and pick up their pick up their dough and don't want to be out there. You know, you, you sense if he doesn't play, then you know he's not happy because he just loves football that much. Yeah, I call him a generational talent, and I agree. I think he's he's, he's hungry. He's hungry to play. Um, you mentioned Ronaldo there. We'll start off with that. He's a United player now. He's in Manchester. Um, he's expected to be back in training. Some are mentioning tomorrow, certainly by Wednesday. Um, let's have a, a couple of minutes to talk about Ronaldo. Yeah. Um, does he does he go straight into that team for you uh, on Saturday against Newcastle? Lots of options for Ali. Promises made to people like Cavani, etc. How do you see this panning out with Ronaldo? Because he's the, he's one of the best in the world. Yeah, he is. I mean, you talk about him and him and Messi being the best two players on on this planet, and um, we've had so much excitement. We've had so much anticipation you know once this deal was announced that he was coming to Old Trafford the fans have been absolutely excited I mean I mean I can't go anywhere now without people asking me about R7 you know and um, everyone was talking about R7 so to think to come the weekend against uh, Newcastle that, that he will not be starting would, would be would be a travesty for everyone because he wouldn't start it's okay to say yeah listen it's not like he's not fit you know, it's not yeah. like he's playing games. You're not talking about someone who's been stuck in Siberia for the last two months. You know, he's been playing games. We saw him in the international break, you know, scored two un unbelievable goals, you know, missed the penalty. But, you know, it just shows what he's all about. You know, he's got two unbelievable goals. So he's, re he's ready to go. You know, he he's, he's not coming here to sit on the bench. First home game for Ronaldo for years and years at OT. It's going to be a packed house. The fans are coming to see him play. Why, why would you put him on the bench? Why would you put him on the bench? It won't make sense. And that, that, don't get me wrong, the Wolves game wasn't great anyway. Yeah. So it's one of those reasons where you can think, well, maybe I, I should start him. I mean, I'll be I'll, I'll be dumbfounded if he doesn't start him. Unless Ronaldo says to him, because I'm sure what Oli would do, he'll have a conversation with Ronaldo, you know, and say, listen, are you ready to go in? Do you feel ready to go in? Do you want to come off the bench and play the last 30 minutes? Last, You know, that con that conversation will take place. Um, and it depends how Ronaldo feels. As I said he's been playing international football. Um, obviously, done a lot of travelling. There'll be, you know, a lot of excitement, a lot of press, a lot of nervous energy that goes that people don't see. Um, and it's just all about timing for for, for Oli. You know, have that conversation. Is he ready to come in? I think personally he is. 
I think the fans want to see him. You know, you don't just once he's there, you don't want to see twenty minutes of an Aldo. You want to try and see sixty, seventy minutes of an Aldo. And it's a, and it's a game that it's a nice game to come into, Marky. You know, it's a nice game. You know, Newcastle have not been great this year. Um, yeah, you expect to win, wouldn't you? Really? I mean, they're, they're not very good, are they? Yeah, right. So. No, they're not very good. Yeah. So you know, it's a game that you can start him. It's not. It's not that he's going straight into a City game or an yeah. Everton or something. Like that. He's going into a Newcastle team at home, where the fans gonna be buzzing. The atmosphere is gonna electric. And you got you got to start him. You really got to start him. But what we what we saw, and that's why I was so interested in watching that Portuguese uh, Republic of Ireland game. How how does he play? We know how he plays, but we saw and we mentioned it a couple of weeks ago on the show, Marky, that he doesn't move a lot. He ain't, he's number not, nine, isn't he? He's a number nine, and he's you know I always tell this about Lukaku when he was at Old Trafford that he spent too much time outside the box outside the goalposts, running down the channels. He's a centre forward. You know, I had the, I had the luxury of playing with Alan Shearer um, in between the posts. That's where you get your goals. And what we saw in Ronaldo last week was that's what he did. And so now we've got to think, how are we going to get the service to him? Because I think when we look at United and, you know, he scored two headers from crosses, how many crosses do we actually put in? Yeah. You, know, you know, we talk about Juan Bissaka gets down the right hand side, then he wants to come back out again. Hmm. Now, the only time we really get across in is Luke Shaw when he's probably going down the byline, which that's after, and, and he puts loads of crosses in. The hanging crosses that Ronaldo loves that we saw against Republic of Ireland, how many times have you put them ball into the box? I think the only way we could do it is if Fernandes goes a little bit more right, because he's got the quality to put them in, and maybe a Pogba, but you want your crosses from your full-backs, you want your crosses from your wing-backs, you know, and, and he, he needs to feed on them. Um, so, Will we see a slight change in how United play because Ronaldo's there? That's an interesting one. It really, really is because I think the more balls we can get into the box, the more chance we've got scoring goals with Ronaldo there. Yeah, defo. The um, I was trying to think through your career. You mentioned playing with Shearer, but I suppose look, the, the, the best thing is always to start with United, and I think the most uh, iconic player that sort of uh, wore that number seven shirt when you were there was um, was Cantona. And he was a sort of focal point. Or oh, Robson wore it as well, didn't he, actually? Yeah. He, he would have still been there before Cantona. Hey, man, son. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, th there's a lot of fans sort of saying, well, Ronaldo comes into this team. There's question marks about Solskjaer. Ronaldo won't put up with this. He won't put up with the slow tempo. He won't put up with not having any, any chances created for him. I, I'm not so sure, but I wanted to keep this question back for you because you've, you've played at the highest level. You've played at United. You've played for England. Is... How how do you read that situation in relation to Ronaldo at United? If he's going into that club and we play like we did last season, we're not creating many chances for the number nine. If he's playing in that club and Ali says, I've promised Cavani some football, so you're not playing against Norwich at home, I'm going to give Cavani a run out. Is Ronaldo, do you get players in the dressing room that can actually be like, nah, I'm not having this? You know, can can are fans right to think that not not in a disruptive way, but you know, I'm Cristiano Ronaldo. I want to play every single game. We're not playing the right brand of football, or is that a no no in 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 football? You know, you know what, Mark, and I think um, it's a great question. Um, times have changed, you know, and when I mean times have changed, I mean players have changed, you know, and I I kind of when I went, when I managed Blackburn in the Premier League. And I went there and I expected the Premier League players to be exactly like they were when I played. Yeah. Absolutely, completely different. You know, not all of them, but the majority of them were absolutely different. Um, if someone, Alex Ferguson, has said to me, Paul, listen, you're playing this weekend, but I'm going to put this, leave you out on Tuesday because I want you to play again Saturday because we're playing Liverpool or we're playing City, then you'll take that on the chin. You take that on the chin. And, um, we are talking about Alex Ferguson now, you know, you're talking about top managers, you know, even even if Brian Rodgers said it to me when I was at Middlesbrough, you know, there have to be a reason behind it. But as because of our characters and the way we are, as, professional, as Premier League footballers, we took it on the chin, you know. Now, nowadays, players have got a lot more power than they did in our time, you know. And I think when you're talking about someone like Ronaldo, is he going to be bigger than Oli? This is this is the question because, you know, Roy Keane left United supposedly because 
he thought he was bigger than Alex Ferguson at Manchester yeah. United. You know, so that can never be the case. That can never happen at a entry that and shouldn't happen at any club whatsoever. If you're the manager, you're the one in charge. You call the shots. So I I don't know whether Ronaldo will come there thinking that he's more powerful than Oli and he can dictate to Oli when he plays and when he doesn't play. You know, I, I really don't know. But what Ronaldo's got to understand is, is that he's 36, you know, and and as much as he, we know, we, we talked about Greenwood, as much as he loves football, we know Ronaldo loves his football. We know this is coming to the end of his, just, he's got his career now. He's only got probably two or three years left, so he's going to want to play as much football as he can. Um... But he's also got to understand that he's 36 and, and you know, playing in Italy hasn't got the intensity mm. and diversity as playing in the Premier League. It's it's, 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 it's tough, you know, it's, it's a hard grind playing in the Premier League. So he, he's got to have that in his head that maybe I don't want to play every week. You know, maybe I'm happy to sit out and miss some games and be, be, in, be in the rotation and let Cavani go in there or Green will go and play up front. Um, but I still think that there'll be games where you're saying, I need to be playing in this game. I need to be playing in that game. You know, he's a, he's, he's a, he's a big time player, Ronaldo. You know, could you leave him out away at Burnley? No disrespect to Burnley. You know, home to Newcastle. There's, there's there'll be games where you say, well, I'll leave him out of this one because we've got a Champions League game on Tuesday. Now, you know, will Oli make that decision or will it be a decision where they sit down and discuss it between the two of them? It should never be that case. It should, I'm the manager. This is what we're doing. You know, no, I'm, I'm going to play this game. I'm, I'm not happy if I'm not playing. I'm the manager. And that's where you can always have a conflict now with, with players because they do throw the toys at the pram pretty, pretty easily, you know. Um, if they're not involved, they're not playing. Um, what about the, um, what about this, this one thing that, you know, I don't make many chances for the number nine. Ronaldo comes in, he's in a month, he's scored two goals, he's not getting any service. Is that the sort of thing you go to the manager and have a word about? Or do you just think, I've made a mistake here? <laughs> um, he's well, big I, enough to have a word, isn't he? He's big enough to say we're not moving. The, maybe he speaks to the players about it. I don't know. I think, I think it's <clears throat> excuse me, I think it's tough when you talk about <clears throat> excuse me, when you talk about players all of a sudden becoming managers. And this, yeah. and this is what happens. This is the problem you get. And, you know, as a manager, I've seen it. All of a sudden, players who, you know, when things ain't going well, start thinking that they're managers and start saying, oh, well, we're not doing this, we should be doing that, we should be doing this, you know, and it kind of stays within the players' fraternity, you know. So if there's a situation where we're not, not creating enough, which we're not creating enough, to be fair, um, then that's down to Mickey Field and Carrick, Ollie, to make sure that's the case. You know, you don't come in and spend thousands and thousands on, 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 on the player a week you know, if if you haven't got a system where it's it's going to create chances for them, you you, you can't do that. And that's why it's it's so intrigued to see how United do go and how they do play. Listen, you know, United ain't started playing well yet. Apart from the Leeds game, they've been quite poor, um, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, so they've yet to, yet to hit top gear. Um, but Ronaldo will expect to play. He, he won't want to not play. Ronaldo's one of those players. It, it's about him. It's, it's, and that's not that's not a bad thing. Some people perceive that as being arrogant, and you know. But when other player, a winner, isn't it? It's about winning. Uh, wants to win. But when other players score, you, you don't really, really, really see him go up and celebrate with them. You know what I mean? You, you don't honestly. I've watched him for my life. For my life. You know what I mean? He, he might just come in right at the end, but when he scores, it's me. It's me. It's me. And that's that's a good thing to have. You know. That's that's. You know, people would like to say, well, he's arrogant and he's selfish. Well, of course, you've got to be selfish if you're going to score as many goals as he does. So if he ain't getting the service and he ain't scoring goals and he ain't getting the adulation that he's accustomed to all his career, then he ain't going to be happy. And he's going to ask questions and then he's going to wonder why. And then the last thing you want is, as I said, a sulking Ronaldo because he ain't scoring goals and getting chances. Um, so it's important that we do create chances for him. How are they going to do that? That's down to them, not down to me. You, um, you've been on a few times, obviously, and I, I remember, I remember, I think Teddy Sheringham said the same thing as well. You, you both said you know I need a, a top class striker. Mm. Um, some people would disagree with that and said, well, we need a midfielder more. But look, we've got that top class striker. 
do you i take it you think that you know in ronaldo you've got one of the best in the game there do you mm -hmm. now expect united to go up that gear because we did finish second last year but mm -hmm. with a player like that in the team as a striker are you expecting this to be a, a, a rip roaring success then yeah i i i, I, I think so. would ronaldo Ronaldo would definitely close the gap on the likes of Liverpool and City this season and Chelsea. I think with having Ronaldo in there, it gives us more optimism about competing. Um, mm. Listen, last year was, you know, was in a pandemic. It was a freak season. You know what I mean? Um, There's no fans at the stadium. It was, it was, the, the atmosphere was dead. You know what I mean? There was no, it was like a training game, some of the games that you watched. Um, and, and so the jury's still out, you know, what if, if, if there'd been a full crowd and the season was as normal, would you not have to finish second? I don't know. That's why the jury's still out for me. You know, this season, as I said, we're back to normal, thank God. Um, so we are on the we are under pressure to actually, you know, finish in the top four again because as I said before, Chelsea have got looked strong. You know, Liverpool look like they're back to where they were, City. Um, so, you know, we're still fine for that top four this year. Um, I, I agree with you, Mark. We should have got a midfield player. We, I, I can't believe we haven't got a centre midfield player. Um, you know, I, you know. I, I was thinking about this the other day. Even someone like Indeedy at Leicester, you know, yeah, yeah, what, be perfect, wouldn't he? But then perfect, something like that. I mean, we're so. I mean, I'm not sure when McTominay's back. I know he's had a groin injury, so he should be back for seven or three weeks. Um, but apart from that, we can't keep relying on Pogba and Fernandez, who's been quiet the last couple of games. We're talking about that holding midfield player. And every week, every week or after week, well, we're, someone's always talking about Fred. Yeah. You know, so we've been saying this for the last two years now. You know, we know we need a top top midfield player. And yet he seems to think, OK, he's happy with what he's got in that department. And if you don't win the midfield and, and you go back to all the midfield players who played in that position, You've got to win that. And it ain't all just about playing nice passing and scoring goals. You've got big and you've got to command the midfield. You've got to take control of it. You know, you've got to be powerful and have a presence. And that's something we haven't got. We've got presence at the back now. We've got a presence at the front. And we haven't got it in the midfield. And as much as Pogba's done great the first two games, he plays them to hold a midfield play against Wolves. It looks terrible. Fernandez looks terrible. So if them two ain't playing, we're going to struggle because you need that engine room to get the service up to Ronaldo and protect the back four. And I don't think we've really, really looked at that. And that's the only disappointing thing about this transfer window. Um, you know, we haven't probably, I think our recruitment as far as the midfield player has not been great. You know, we keep talking about Johnny van der Beek. You know, I can't believe that he's not gone in, in, in this window. I, 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 I was going to just bring up just before you spent mentioned that I just add a bit to that because I was going to ask you about that anyway. Um, this morning, his agents come out and basically said that look, we, we wanted to go to Everton on the Monday. Um, we don't want to go, but it's very clear that Ronaldo comes in, Pogba comes back in midfield. Obviously, we know Lingard stayed as well. He wasn't getting game like time last year. It's probably going to be worse this year. We've had that chat. We've looked at Everton because they haven't got a number 10 with Sigurdsson in trouble and Rodriguez looking to leave. And, mm. you know, we've, we've, we've put the groundwork in and then Solskjaer said, you're not leaving. So we've had a chat with him and said, look, Donny's not a Carabao Cup player. He's not an FA Cup player. He's come here to play in the Premier League. Ollie's obviously said, well, we'll have to wait and see. And they're saying, well, you know, if, if, if he ain't going to get any game time, we want to go. So it, it, what, what's your sort of situation? You know, as a player, ex-player yourself, that's a that's a frustrating position when you, especially when you, 35 million ain't cheap. You said that last week. Yeah. Come in. He's looked good when he's been given limited chances, but he's never been allowed to build on that. He looks to go and then Ollie says, no, you're not going. But then I'm not massively confident he's going to use him in it again. No, not at all. And I think obviously the reason why he's probably said that, and sometimes, it, you know, as a player, it can all be about timing. And time can either go for you or go against you. I think in uh, Johnny's case, it's it's gone against him with the fact that Scott McTominay's done his groin. Yeah, you're right. Um, and I feel that if that wasn't the case, he might have said, "Go on, off you go, son. Get yourself down to down to Goodison." Um, but McTominay, and, and listen, there's no guarantee about Lingard's there. We know that. Um, and I think maybe I don't know. Even though he keeps playing Fred. You know, I think maybe you might be thinking, well, maybe I could try and put Tom and A and Van Beek in there or, you know, mix and match. They've got a lot of games this year, United. You know, Champions League games now. And so they've got a lot of games to play, FA Cup, League Cup, all that stuff. So you like to think they're going to get time, but you're absolutely spot on, Mark. You know, he didn't come here to play in the Carabao Cup, you know, or the third round of the FA Cup down at Grimsby or something like that. You know, he came to compete. 
And the thing about Manchester United is that you've always had strength in depth that can, that can compete with the players on the park. And if I know that if I'm not playing well, I've got Paul Scholes sitting on the bench or Roy Keane sitting on the bench, you know, so, or Steven Gerrard. So, you know, it always, you always have to raise your game, you know. Uh, so Johnny must have come and thought, yeah, well, you see, you're going to compete with this midfield. Because it'd been interesting what the conversation would have been when he left Ajax. You know, when Oli sat him down and said, listen, I want you at Manchester United, for what reason? You know, because you're going to play in this midfield. This is what I'm trying to build, X, Y and Z. That's the conversation as a, as a manager. You have to convince the player that he's going to play, play when he gets to the club. And, and, and it looks like to me that he's kind of gone back on his word. Well, his agent said that. He said that when he, when he joined the club, he was told there was going to be a different system and, and obviously that hasn't happened and stuff. Yeah, and, and, and that's, listen, I mean, things, dynamics can change, you know, but at the end of the day, you, you convince a player to leave Ajax to come to United and, and he just sits on the bench and all you hear is, oh, yeah, well, he's going to get his game time like he was hearing last year. You know, you said the other week, you know, he brings on McTominay and Lingard before him. You know, so when you see those signs as a player, when you see those signs as an agent, it just reads out to me, he doesn't fancy me. Yeah. You don't fancy me, otherwise I'll be, I'll be getting game time. He clearly it, doesn't, does he? No, so, when you know, and, and that's the thing, that's why the time has kind of sucks and the fact that McTominay is injured. Um, but then again, he, he, he was injured last time and he brought Lingard on. So, you know, from, as a player, he wants to play football. Johnny, he does. You can see it in him. You know, I know he played last Wednesday against my son at Old Trafford, Stoke, and you know Thomas was just saying, oh, it's just, you know, it's like he didn't want to be there. You know what I mean? Mm. He's playing Wednesday that like international break, and he's playing at Old Trafford, you know, against Stoke, and he's think, well, this, this is what, what I'm here for. You know, so it looks like his head might be starting to drop, which is that's the end, isn't it? Then you know that the, you know if you're playing and you're waiting for your chance, and then. You know, year in, you're like, this ain't going to change. Then it's going to impact anyone, isn't it, really? Of course it is. And, and, and it impacts people in the changing room. You know, because sometimes you get players who are like this. And there's always like a group of players who, who are probably not playing, want to try and get away, don't get away. Not saying that this is the case with Johnny, but, <clears throat> and then you kind of see the kind of negativity in, in the change room. You know, some players are really professional. I think, listen, I haven't got the move that I want but I'm still part of the team. I'm still going to be positive. I'm still going to try. But on the flip of the coin, you get the one little group that go, well, can't think, get away. What am I doing here? Stop sulking and causing murders in the change room. You know, so it can have a kind of negative effect when players don't get away. I don't see that. I don't see that in John. I think he's a top, top pro, but they'd be disappointed. And to be fair, after last year, if I'd have been Johnny, I'd have been having this conversation July. As soon as I went into pre-season, I said July. I said, gone and see the manager. Where do you see me this season? Because last season was wasn't great for me from a personal point of view. Um, where do you see me this year? Because the wind is open. Are you bringing the BLC in? Am I going to get game time? You know, but they obviously didn't have the. They always wait to the last minute, Mark. You know what I mean? And it's, <laughs> they always wait for the last minute, and yeah, it, it, it'd be devastated. So, but listen, things can change in football. People do get injured. People get sent off. He has to now wait now until he gets his chance, and he's got to try and take that chance. And if he takes that chance, then he stays in the side. That's what that's, that's always that's always been the case. If you take the chance, you're in the side, then he's part of it. If not, then I'll, I'll be pretty sure it'll be gone in January. Mm. Well, interesting to see what happens with that one. Um, I want to talk about the past a little bit. We'll talk about Sellers Park in a minute. But one thing that just came into my my mind mm. um, that I've never asked you is if I was to say to you, who were the three best players you played with at Manchester United? Is that an easy question for you to answer? There's the three that sort of pop out that you go, yeah, they were just different gravy for whatever reason. Well, it's a tough one, really, because we've had so many great players. I mean, one, I mean, Ryan Giggs for sure, without a doubt. Um, Brian Robson. Those you played with Giggsy when he was sort of he broke through as well, didn't he? he was came through is it ninety one his debut at seventeen, yeah. and you, you got that sort of exciting youngster he was then not yeah. not the old one we had at the end <laughs> <laughs> the one who's playing in the midfield yeah um yeah i think brian robson was my idol so to play with him was great but i didn't get brian robson when he was the brian robson you yeah. know um so if i could probably stand out would be kenton art kenton art gigs keen i would have yeah, them three them three would be the ones for me kenton art gigs keen um, 
they're probably the best ones I play with at United. Uh, and that's probably, you know, Scalzi was just coming through at the time, so was Beck. So yeah. I didn't see him in their pomp. You know, Schmeichel was unbelievable. Um, but it's, but it's funny though, but you, you never really talk about the defenders. You know, Dennis Urban was world class for me. Um, but Keeney was exceptional. You know, honestly, unbelievable. And Giggsy, for what he's done, his longevity. And you don't see people like him no more. That's the thing. You don't see people like Giggsy no more. You know, those flying things doing what he did. And um, and Cantona was Cantona, you know, just because of the impact that he had and just the way he trained and, you know, his touch. And he, he didn't have a weakness, um, apart from losing his head now. And then he didn't have a weakness when it comes to playing football, that's for sure. Well, we'll talk about that. It was the 25th of January, 95. Yeah. You actually left the following summer, didn't you, actually? I didn't realise well, when I was looking at that. Yeah, cheers, Marky. Thanks very yeah. much. But... Well, I didn't actually leave. I was told I had to leave. Just get, can put that, get that right, please. Yeah, because he got he got banned. So Sellers Park, Canton Kick, mm. we're going to talk about that. But um, he got banned and then he didn't play again until after you'd left. Had he, he, he no. didn't play till the November, I think. So that... it really was that. You know, you can't win anything with kids, which you know obviously works. But the '95 uh, incident at Sellers Park. Um, tell us. T- I mean, we've heard lots of things about this, but obviously, you we met, we touched on it a couple of weeks ago that you actually got charged yourself. So, yeah. sort of tell us the story of what happened from from your point of view all the way through to sort of like after the dressing room and everything. Was it was it bubbling up in that sort of game, and and, and did, could you see it coming? Was because it was unprecedented evening that in, in Premier League football, you know, if that happened now, God knows what had happened. No, I know. Um, you know what? It, it, it wasn't even a nasty game. You know what I mean? It wasn't like a game where you'd be playing Wimbledon and you've got Vinnie Jones and Fashion and all those people and wise in that, you know, it wasn't what that type of game. And it, we never really set those games anyway against Palace. You know, they were quite, you know, friendly games. There was no kind of, big rivalry between us anyway. Um, and it was Richard Shaw, wasn't it? He, he, he kicked, wasn't it? If I remember rightly. Um, and and I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know why it actually happened. I really, really don't. All, all I know is that he fouls Richard Shaw, he gets sent off, and I'm facing at, uh, Palace's goal because I'm thinking we could carry on with the game. And the next minute, I hear this like commotion, and I turn around and I'd I'd seen Eric kick someone in the crowd, and I thought, what the fuck's going on here? All right. So prior to that, he's walking along the touchline. So obviously, like any other player, you get sent off. You walk along the touchline. There's no problems in the change rooms. We're down to ten men. Let's crack on. Um. So you don't really start standing there looking at him because you don't expect him to anything to happen. That's why I turned my face and said, all right, let's focus on the game. Next minute, I'm sitting in the crowd, kicking some bloke, jumping in the thing, punching some bloke. So I thought, oh, my God. So we've all turned to, to run over there. Um, I think coming dragged out of the stands and he walked him down into the thing. But as we've got there, all the Mate United lads and Palace lads, because they got a bit involved, all the Palace fans came running down towards, towards, towards the Mate United players. So we're all like shouting, effing and blinding and like pushing each other, X, Y and Z. Um, got calmed down, carried on with the game. And when you're playing that game there was, after that event, there was still a disbelief. You know, when you're trying to concentrate on the game and in the back, in back of my mind, I'm thinking, did that really happen? You know, did that really happen? You, you get the commotions, you get all that, you know what I mean? But the fact that Eric actually went into the crowd and Kung Fu kicks on and hit someone, you think, wow. You know, in, in a perverse kind of way, I think, you know, when you listen to the abuse and so on that he got from this person um about his mother and all that type of stuff and people chucking tea on him i think he i think he did whatever player wanted to do yeah there's been so many times where i've just wanted to jump into a, into a uh, stadium and into the fans and just you know someone who's like racially abusing you or something like that you know and just go give him a good idea you know so many times but something in your mind says no 
you're a professional footballer, you know, you're a role model to a lot of kids that look up to you. The last thing you, you want to do is that. But if you ask 99% players, you know, they'd probably say, you know, they'd, they wish they could have done that, you know. Um, and the person who did it, he, he deserved it anyway. Um, so the game carried on. So we finished the game and I can't remember what the result was. You know, it, it was all about cancer. I can't remember what the result was. That... I, I think you, we either lost or drew. I don't think we won. Yes. I, you know, somebody will know in the chat, but I, I think we yeah, lost no, or drew. No, no one thinks about what, that, that, what the result was. All we're yeah. thinking about our situation. So we get into the change room and, you know, Eric's sitting there with his top off and... Oh, he was still in the dressing room then when, when you went in there, yeah? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, and then obviously Sox came in and it was just like... It was just, it was just like a sombre feeling. It was just... It was just like just being to a funeral, you know what I mean? It, that's exactly what it was like, we'd been to a funeral. And you could sense that Everybody wanted to say something, you know. Did you see what happened there? Did you see what everyone wants to talk about, it, but Fergus says no one says a word, no one says nothing. Um, and we just must have sat there for about ten minutes. Um, then all of a sudden, Eric went out, the gaffer went out, and Sir Alex went out. Um, we were all getting showered, and all of a sudden, as soon as the gaffer went out, we all started saying, oh, do you fucking see that? <laughs> oh, that's madness, isn't it? And all that stuff, what happened, what happened? So we look like little kids in the playground. <clears throat> um, so then we, I got back in, put my towel back, dried myself up, went to put my tracks on, and then Sadix comes in and goes, Paul, um, police want to see you. I'm thinking, well, what for? Well, so I was looking that way, I didn't, you know what I mean? They said, oh, someone's come and complained that you threw a punch and hit him in the face. So, and do you know something, Mark? Do you know when you're kind of in that moment, and I said when all the crowd was there and everyone was pushing and chubbing and the crowd came submerging down to the front of the st stand, you kind of like, you doubt yourself, you know? You kind of say, you think, did, did I do it, yeah. Yeah, did I, do it? Did I, did I not do it? Uh, um, so I said to Sir Alex, I said, I said, did anybody, I, I want to know. I mean, if I said I'll have cuts on my fingers or a bruise on my fit hand would be sore. So, I had to go and see the police, explain what happened. That was it. A couple of days later, Sir Alex said, oh, they're charging with the same offence as Eric Cantona. So I went, Yeah, you, d you definitely didn't fly in there, Paul. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, I can't charge with this. I just felt it was just like, it, it was madness, you know what I mean? But it, the geezer made a report to the police. So we ended up going to court on, on, on the basis of that. And, you know, I remember the night before, it was, it was one of the best nights of my life. Me and Eric went for dinner. We stayed in the Croydon Park Hotel. Um, and uh, we went for dinner that night. And there was press everywhere, you know, and they're not getting in the car. My, my agent had a driver, drink the car, went somewhere nice and quiet. And then Eric goes, oh, shall we go to a nightclub? <laughs> I, said, I said, Eric, I said, we've been caught tomorrow at half past nine. I said, ah, come on, let's go to a nightclub, you know. If we go down, at least we had a good night tonight. So uh, we ended up going to a nightclub about now, in London uh, called Emporium. And um, we had there, we were drinking wine, and all of a sudden Prince was playing in the port in the nightclub. I remember it so well, Prince was playing. He was doing a half little solo gig. So we ended up staying there till about half past one in the morning. When we got back to the hotel, we had the joining rooms so he could get into my room, I can get into his room. So um, he said, right, Eric, let's get to bed. Big day tomorrow. And um, that was it. Half past eight, woke up, banged on his door, opened the door, and he's standing there. I've got a suit tie on, right to the top, you know what I mean? He's standing there, suit on, buttons down through his chest. I said, Eric, I said, you can't go cool like that. I said, the magistrate sees you like that. She's going to think. And he said, no, no, wait, Paul. I'm Eric Cantona. This is how I dress. This is how I dress. <laughs> um, honestly, we got into court, and you know when he—I he, mean—he just pleaded guilty. And you know when when he got um, custodial sentence, obviously, which he didn't serve. Yeah. Um, from the expression that when he went in there, it didn't change when I even said that. He's, he didn't even flinch. You know, if it'd been me, I'd have been crying and saying, "Oh, where's my wife?" And I don't want to go down and all that. Like, he did not flinch, Marky boy. Honestly, and I thought, wow. 
nothing can get to him. No, it, it, it was like that he was prepared to do the sentence or the two weeks or the seven days, whatever it was, because he'd have done what he'd done. He realised what he'd done was wrong, but he was kind of glad that he'd done it and he was prepared to face the, face the consequences of it. Do, the time, do the crime, do the time yeah. sort of thing, yeah. And that's, that's the power of the man. That's the power of the man. And um, obviously I pleaded not guilty and got away with it. The kids just made the story up and he was pissed. Um, but it's still a worry. And that's the thing, yeah, yeah. talk about the Cantona thing. They, they they forget that I was also in court. I, I, I didn't realise that you said a couple of weeks ago. I, yeah. I, I, now, now, when you said it, I thought, oh, that rings a bell now. But it was a long yeah. time ago. But yeah, it's all about Cantona, wasn't it? Yeah. It was all about Cantona because I was, but he just pleaded guilty. I just said my name and address. I wasn't guilty. and was there for a couple of days. And there was some camera bits because they all showed some scenes of the, the melee. Mm. And there's a bit where as I've got to push someone, my right hand's gone first. And it looks like I'm actually punching someone. And then you start, cause when you're standing up there in front of the thing, and they start questioning you and quizzing you, and you think, hmm, did I do that? <laughs> I, I categorically didn't, you know, but it was, it was a worry for a couple of days, you know, it really, really was. But going back to Cantona, um, what a man. What a man, honestly. I mean, he didn't let a lot of people around him. You know, it was very, because his wife stayed in, in, in France, but he used to live up in, the, in another hotel, hotel up near Swinton. That's where he stayed. So we spent a lot of time, me, him and Giggsy together. Um, and yeah, I mean, you couldn't get closer, but we got closer than most people did. And um, it's a trouble. Do you have anything to do with him now? I've not seen him for ages, not since he started yeah. his acting and all that stuff, you know what I mean? But it just shows me that's, that's typical cancer, is it? You can quit football early and then go into, into films. You know, not many footballers can do that, can they? I, I, I mean, look, you know, you are you, you're born when you're born and there's great things and there's bad things but i always say that that you know it was a privilege to watch that team certainly from sort of pretty much it, it changed after that it changed after that Cantona kick and obviously yourself and hughes and Konchelskis went but that united team was the first proper united team under sir alex and mm. it almost feels like a different time i mean the 90s were great anyway you had all you know oasis hit and all that sort of stuff yeah. in the music scene but <laughs> United were like that was like a rock and roll team that United side you know young 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 Giggsy the midfield and then you had, you had you know the workers around it and then you had that Cantona that you just wouldn't I don't think Cantona could exist in the modern game I think it I think it, I think the modern social media would just yeah I just don't I think he'd walk I think he'd walk he'd go this is because he had that thing about him was that look I'll play football but I'm an artist I'm not here yeah. to be trending on Twitter or this that and the other I'm here to to play football he was unique to the time and it was a spe very, very special time. What was the fallout after that then? Because he got banned. You never played with him again, really, after that. Was he, was it, was that, did that have a big impact? Because that was the season where we could have won the double and we didn't. And then yeah. everything changed. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a, that was a terrible year, obviously, losing to Everton. And then obviously the West Ham game away. Um, we should have won yeah, even without him, we, we, if we'd have beat West Ham, we would have won the league. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think even with him, we would have won the league before then. Um, yeah. So that, that was, that was a, that was the only thing where we'd been punished as as a team, yeah. you know. As I said prior to that, that yeah, we did something that most players would want to do if you'll get abused by fans. But the consequences was that was that we didn't have them for the rest of the season. And um, if we had done, then we would have. We what, what, whatever happened, that West Ham wouldn't have mattered, you know. And even the Everton FA Cup final is probably the worst FA Cup final I've ever been involved in. Yeah, uh, it was crap. You were crap was, that day. Not no, you individually, but United was just ever was crap. Never should have lost that. Yeah, and but if you think if Everett would have been there, he might have given us that kind of mm. you know different thing like he did against Chelsea the, the year before. Um, so yeah, I think after that, you know, things might listen. If he'd have been there and we'd have won the double again, who knows what might have I mean, It could have changed a lot of things, couldn't it? You know, yeah. what I mean? no, I might. Well, I think it would have done because I think ultimately we we lose the title, mm. we lose the FA Cup, and obviously something in Sir Alex's head goes. I need to re I need to hit the reset button. Yeah. But if you've won the double again, I mean, I don't know what we did in Europe that year. I, I, that's the only thing about that era. Mm. I just I just blanked Europe off. We were losing to people mm. like Gothenburg and stuff like that. Well, you still had the bloody rule, didn't you? Where you it's couldn't play. For all that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to, to Barcelona. You know, I've got Gary Walsh in goal, and I just with Gary Walsh. You know what I mean? We, we couldn't yeah. play gigs in it because they were classed as foreigners and yeah. Barcelona and that. I mean, they get beat four 0 And I still maintain if if we had our strongest team. We without that stupid bloody rule, we would have won the Champions League ages ago. 
Yeah, uh, people forget that. People forget that. They just think, oh, well, we were shit in Europe. Well, we weren't because we could only play half a team. I can't remember what year that was that they got rid of that rule, but yeah, it was a bloody pain in the arse. I remember I used to watch it on Wednesday night on an ITV, and like I say, you'd be playing Gothenburg and Blomfist would blow you score, and you'd be like, what the fuck's going on here? I think you got sent off in that game. I, as did, well. I, did. I was yeah. waiting for you to mention that. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you get sent off for England and then sent off for United quite close together? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I did. Why, why are you bringing it up? I was on a lovely morning. Because I've got a memory like this. I, I, I just thought <laughs> things would drop into my head, and I rem- yeah, I remember that game. We were shy at that game, <laughs> but yeah, again, it was just Europe. We were just this rule was a bloody pain in the ass. It was a killer for us, absolute killer for us. And um, but listen, you know, I think I think even then, I think because the title was probably more bigger than actually Europe. I think from especially for late night fans, you know, not winning for twenty six years. You know, it was all about the title, wasn't it? That was your bread and butter. That's where you, yeah. you know, FA Cup final was still a big final. Nowadays, FA Cup's not as important as the Champions League, or you know, but what do you? Oh, yeah, FA Cup was massive up until probably about after even '99. It was still massive. It was it was when we didn't enter it to defend it, wasn't it? That was it. Yeah. And that's that's what that's what happened. So you know, those big trophies as a kid, it was league winning the league and winning the FA Cup. So yeah. you know, to do that in '89, '90, and obviously '94. And win the league. That's more precious to Manchester United. I think Manchester United fans understood the rule that we can't produce a, a strong plat team every day, every time we went into Europe. And when you're getting your ass kicked by Barca 4 0, that wouldn't happen to a Manchester United team who was at its full, full strength. Um, but no, listen, I think you're probably right. After those, probably a couple, couple of bad defeats, Fergie must have thought, well, because Alex was good at that. He was good at you know making a transition and taking players out. and. You know, not to say getting rid of me and Chelsea's and Mark Hughes was a good idea. It seemed to work for him because they ended up winning the league that year. But I know a lot of fans were going bananas, you know, on on on, on, on um, that happening, you know. Well, if Keegan hadn't bottled it, they were 12 points clear at one point, yeah. weren't they? But they did bottle it, you know. How we came back and won that was that was Cantona and Schmeichel, basically. The amount of games we were winning 1-0 at the end. But Newcastle bottled that. It could have gone very differently. You know, Hanson could have yeah. been right. You can't win it with kids. No. You kind of got that bit of luck, and as you say, Kent and I are back. Um, Schmeichel, one of the best keepers in the world. Um, but it's, listen, it, 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 is, it is, and I think we we started the cycle. Of this, you know, that's a, <clears throat> you know, we we start the cycle of winning trophies and changing the mentality, and you know the way you play at, at Old Trafford, and so to be part of that start cycle and keep it going forward has been great in the nineties. But now we need it back. You know, now we need it back because it's different now. We have got. You know, you've got Chelsea winning titles and you've got City, you know, Liverpool. So it's kind of getting split about, but not, you know, we need to be involved but in that pack again where we're, we're, we're winning titles. I agree. I agree. It's been a pleasure again, as always, Paul, dipping into the past, but also making it about the present. And um, yeah, uh, re- really thoroughly enjoyed having you on again. I hope you've uh, enjoyed that trip. Down always, really. Love it. Always love it. It was a pleasure. And hopefully, like you said at the start, uh, Ronaldo can give us that little bit extra to get us that little bit closer. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll watch this space with the midfield and see how it goes. OK, I'll get my, I might get the boots on, Marky. I can feel a <laughs> little roll coming in the middle of the park. Uh, there'll be people in the chat saying he's better than Fred. Um, which, uh, <laughs> I'm you, you might, judging by last game, you might fancy it, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, as ever, big big thanks for coming on, Paul. Really appreciate it. It was a pleasure, mate. See you soon. All right, mate. And thanks everyone for watching. We'll speak to you all in a bit. Make sure you smash a like and everything like that.